Hi, I'm Colby Murray, and today I want to review Babylon. This is Damien Chazelle's latest film, and it's about Hollywood's transition from the silent films to the talkies. Damien Chazelle has such a great track record of films, from Whiplash to La La Land to First Man, so I was super excited going to this film. I'm also a huge sucker for 1920s Hollywood setting, so this was exactly what I wanted to watch. The film is a bit, it's a bit mixed. I say that kind of frustrated because I really, really wanted to love this movie. Some parts of the movie are really, really good, and so the highs are really high, but the film doesn't quite come together, and especially the second half feels more disjointed. And so when it's trying to land a clear thematic message, I feel like the film uh, kind of fails in that uh, that aspect. But there's a lot to like about the film, and I, I really enjoyed watching it. I just wish that it could have been better because it had so many key pieces already there. It just seemed like it needed a bit more refining in order to become like a classic masterpiece. So the score in this film is really good. It's a lot of fun to listen to. It's this 1920s jazz music, and it's just kind of this roaring kind of background track that really keeps the party going. There's a lot of debauchery throughout the entire film, and this score perfectly accompanies it. The song Coke Room is especially good, and that theme is carried on in other songs throughout the film. And there's a lot of really great performances. Newcomer Diego Calvo really stands out in his role, and his character brings so much life and energy to the film. I think kind of the only downside is that there's five kind of main characters that chart their rise and fall throughout the transition, and they kind of get a bit crowded out. But all of them give a good performance. Margot Robbie does a great job. Brad Pitt does a great job. Lee Jun Lee does a great job. And Jovan Adepo also give a great job. There's just not enough space for all of them to really... Uh, get their own arc, especially Lee Jun Lee and Joven Adepo kind of get sidelined and don't have enough space to fully shine. Now, this film is essentially like an R-rated version of Singing in the Rain. This film also does debauchery really well. The first 25 minutes is just this huge party and orgy, and it's really funny and really, really well made. It's only too bad that just kind of the themes that are started there aren't really fully developed and, and continued throughout the rest of the film. Um, but you can't argue with how well it's made. Um, if that kind of stuff is too much for you, it's very, very graphic, then you probably aren't going to like the film. The film has this really great litmus test at the beginning of whether or not you're going to like the, the humor in the film. So Diego Calva is trying to get an elephant in a truck up this hill, but the elephant, of course, is too heavy, and the truck is falling backwards. And so him and his friend have to help push the truck up the hill, and the elephant's just too heavy, it's, it's falling backwards, but then the elephant just starts pooping all over them and it's all over the camera and it's just basically raining poop. And if you find this funny, I think you'll enjoy the humor in this film. And if you don't, then you're going to be really grossed out and, and not enjoy uh, the rest of what's to come. Another strength of the film is how well it shows the filming of scenes. Those scenes are so funny and so well done. There's these silent epics that are being filmed and all the chaos and commotion that's going on. And it's it's hilarious to see it come together, particularly with these silent films that obviously they're silent while, while being shown, but this just noisy chaos that's going on around the set is really, really funny. And it matches the, the debauchery in the parties with just the chaos on set. So I think those uh, those companions are, are, are really good. And there's also the transition to the talkies of just the, the difficulties of trying to actually get the microphone and everything else to line up. There's this scene where there's 17 takes of this scene and just all the frustrations that the crew is having. And there's obviously the scene is reminiscent of Singing in the Rain, whereas that is maybe the funny version. This is the R-rated version with everyone cursing each other out and getting madder and madder and it all about to explode. Ah, fuck this! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I will shit in your mouth! I will shit on you! Okay, so now the not so good part. And the kind of repulsiveness in this film is this just self-aggrandizing about uh, film and about Hollywood. And I think that has put a lot of people off because it feels very much like this is an important movie because it's about Hollywood. And I think that is a bit annoying. The second half really jumps into this power of cinema 
kind of trope that I find particularly frustrating because it just is like, instead of sh telling me that cinema is so powerful, you should show me, you should move me, you should, you should make a good film, you shouldn't tell me that films are, are really awesome. And I think a particularly egregious scene is towards the end, and I hate this scene when it's in other movies, but it's terrible in this movie too, is when it's in a cinema, and it's the shot when it's just of all the audiences gaping up at the movie screen, being so moved. I hate this shot so much. It's so annoying and such a cheap way to show, wow, cinema just moves everyone. And I think ultimately what they're saying is that all of this chaos, all of this like loss of life was was worth it for this character because he just loves movies so much. And that's, that's probably the way that Damien Chazelle uh, feels. But I guess that part feels disjointed because throughout the film you see people dying, you see people being just uh, thrown away by the Hollywood machine and the end is just kind of like a glorification of cinema and I think that is a, a frustrating way to end the movie. I don't know, I, I kind of left with mixed feelings. I definitely enjoyed watching it and, and would recommend other people to go watch it but it's, uh, you know, it it could have been so much better if they just, I don't know, if they if they just nailed the landing a, a bit better and especially the second half. I don't know if they just needed to cut down on some characters, but I mean, I love that 1920s Hollywood setting. So uh, that's that was the experience for me. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye.